Welcome back, everyone. It's Cash Cannon. We're back for, unfortunately, the last episode of the Learning Kitchen Live Celtics Takeover with Community Servings. I'm so excited because we've had some incredible chefs, incredible guests, incredible meals, but we're really going out with a bang. Um, we have some really, really incredible special guests that I'll introduce. We have registered dietitian from Community Servings, Liz. We have Chef Chris. And then we have one of our Celtics dancers, Row. So this is going to be a really, really fun episode. Um, Chef Chris, we're going to start with you. The setup looks incredible. Talk us through. What are we making? What do we have on the counter here? Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Chef Chris Faison. Um, so what we got going on today is we're going to do some vegan chicken and waffles. Um, I chose vegan chicken and waffles for a particular reason because um, I'm really big in eating healthy in the culture, especially in black culture and the culture of people of color. They think that when you eat healthy, it doesn't have to taste good. Right. They think that it just has to be like, oh, there's no, no flavor and no love. But I'm going to show you how today how to make something that's really with flavor and love that most people think is from a culture from us. And turn it crazy like it's gonna be really good let's go crazy then i love it it's gonna be crazy all right I'm so really what do good. we have what's on the counter okay, here so what we got going on right now i'm just temping my oil because i don't want my oil to go over all right so go we got over what over 375 375 okay I'm hold it at 375 but we'll figure it out as we go we'll play with it okay i like to play <laughs> <laughs> okay so we got a bunch of stuff over here we're gonna start on urine and then we're gonna work our way down so over okay. here this is the stuff to make the vegan waffles. So we have some um, flaxseed seeds, some oat milk, some flour, salt, bacon powder, sugar, um, vegan butter. So we're going to start with you guys. And what I want you guys to do is take the water and the flaxseed seed and put it right into the bowl. Right to work. That's right all you, bro. Go right ahead. Go. Do your thing. Water. That <laughs> it ain't going to bite. And just sprinkle the flaxseed seed right over there. There you go. Wow, look at you. you All should, right, you okay. Be a professional chef. Look. I should hire you. <laughs> look. So, on this end, we got going over here. We have, we're going to do it for the fried waffle, for the fried chicken, the, the fake vegan chicken. So, I'm going to have Liz take the water, the flaxseed seed, and the smoke, the liquid smoke, and put it in the bowl. Liquid smoke. Wow. Liquid smoke. We're going to like give it a little, give it something a little bit different. Like, I'll be honest with you, if I had the time, I would have smoked the. I would have smoked the mushrooms myself, but time I got is time for essence. all that. Yeah, yeah. Time is of the so essence. the liquid smoke it, it, it provides that it smoky provides flavor. That smoky flavor, that nice pungent flavor that we're looking for. Yeah. Gonna give it a little bit different of a texture, a little bit of a taste to the to your nose and to yep. your palate. It's gonna be really great. Okay. Okay. Um. So like, I want to talk about one of the reasons why I chose chicken and waffles. Yep. So while we do that, you're gonna take the butter. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, the vegan butter. We're gonna drop it right onto this little bad boy. You right gotta there. roll a little nervous out here, Chef. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna take the oat milk and we're gonna pour it right in there. So we're gonna melt that. And the reason why, because we're gonna we're gonna break that down, melt that butter down, so we can get ready to go on making our waffles. Yep. So we're gonna talk about chicken and waffles. Everyone thinks that chicken and waffle is a southern dish. Yep. It's made everybody think when you think about chicken and waffle, you think about Roscoe's. You think about a lot of places in Atlanta, yep. but chicken and waffles really started in Pennsylvania. Right, people was like, my Right, I don't believe it. <laughs> so chicken and waffles started in the 1800s in Pennsylvania. It's a Dutch dish, actually. Okay. And it started with chicken and catfish, to be real with you. It was chicken and catfish, but people started, during their catfish started getting really scarce. So they started doing chicken. Mm. And they started doing chicken. It wasn't with any other sauce. It was just chicken waffle gravy. And a, a, a cast iron a waffle maker is a Dutch. Yep. A Dutch yep. thing. Yep. So that's why chicken and waffles, that's how it migrated from the Pennsylvania to the South was that a restaurant in Harlem in like the 1960s, I think it's called Super Club, Super Club yep. they started making chicken and waffles. So there was a lot of people there who were like celebrities that was going there that was yep. like, who would just pass the word on, pass the word on, pass the word on. And then it got, ended up in California. So when it ended up in California, it started off, that's how Roscoe started. Yep. Roscoe chicken and waffles and things like that. So it's really a Dutch thing that most people think that's a Southern thing. But the Southern people, of course, with a black culture, we're really good at turning anything good. Mm -hmm. So we get our <laughs> that's hand what on we it. do. We get our hand on it, and then we just locked it in. But yep. it was 
a really great thing that I found out like when people, I talked to people about history of food because I believe in food culture and they would tell them history of food that, you know, things are that you think that it's really from here. When you really dig into where it comes from, it's surprising. Right, It's right. really, really surprising. Right. I so love that. That's one of the reasons why I chose this is to let people understand like, you know, where the origin of these things that we're making come from because right. it's very important to know the culture of your food. Mm -hmm. you know like the background of how your food's made and who discovered it. And it could be back to the your culture. Like mm -hmm. maybe you have somebody in your family that's Dutch. Yep. And it's you know it's good to know those things. Yep. I feel like and when you do that, you just have a a, a better appreciation for the food, the right? Food. When you grow it, when you understand it, when you know yes. where it comes from. Yes. You just appreciate it and that's what the we, we, we it. We need to, we just eat and it's like mindless, right? We just like put food in our mouth, but if we had a better appreciation, it would taste better, the experience would be better. So, so I like that, I There's like that. so much to understand when you go to a restaurant and not even just think about the appreciation of food, just the appreciation of the love that that person put into that dish. Right. Just to see like, like you know, just stop, don't eat to take a picture. Eat to really think about <laughs> <laughs> literally. Welcome to 2023. Right, <laughs> eat to really dig in and taste the flavor Think about, when I go to restaurants, I think about the chef. Hey, what made him think to put this in there? I, I try to read on his culture and see where he comes from and things like that because you could tell a story through a meal. Yep. And most people just would come in and rum, 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 rum. Like, yep. hey, what, what's the flavor profile? Mm. Why'd you do that? how he do that? And just think along those things and you could have a whole different dining experience. Right. And you just, sit there just not oh my god it tastes so good right we know that <laughs> like really try to break down some of these flavors that's yep. in your mouth like you know instead of just mm, sweet mm, salty <laughs> you know like find the spices so that's why i really love like food because food really tells a story for anybody mm. from your culture and then food brings everyone together yep, yep. like yeah i tell people all the time like i do believe that if you put me in a room and there's a war going around you let me cook, war's over. <laughs> war's over, let's go. Ultimate Wait. peacemaker. Yo, yeah. I'm start it's <laughs> peace. So let's get back to cooking. Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do over here is that we have a whole bunch of spices. Yep. So we have some flour. I have a lot of spice mix that's in here, smoked paprika. We have some Cajun spice, some thyme. Um, I do believe this is a pitch of cinnamon, I believe. Uh, garlic, garlic onion, onion. Thyme, yes. All yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna throw this right into here. Okay. And salt, of course. Yep. Um, I have some nutritional yeast. Yep. Nu nutritional Ooh. yeast. Yes. Ooh. So before I get into it, I'm gonna pass it to the dietitian and let her talk about it. But I can do talk about nutritional yeast, about the things I wanna tell ask her about. What do you think about like how great is this stuff? Because I love it and like I I I literally, no lie, I dip stuff in there. It's like a cheesy flavor to me yeah. and eat it. So. I put it on my popcorn. Yes. I like it for my popcorn too. Yeah, um, yeah it's it's a interesting um, flavoring. It can, and it's pretty versatile too. It may be one that a lot of people aren't necessarily used to using, but um, it's a great source of B vitamins. So it's got a lot of nutrition for you. Um, it's a great topping for um, popcorn. And also it's often used in vegan dishes and preparations. Um, it's a little umami, a little salty, but you can also use it as a cheese as well. So um, once you purchase it, you can actually find a lot of different ways to use this. So it's a nice ingredient to store in your cupboard. Um, so I'm also excited to hear what Chef Chris has to say more about this ingredient too. So um, nutritional yeast for me is, um, I got introduced into it. Uh, I used to work at a vegan restaurant and um, we was to try to do things that were cheap. So the reason I use nutritional yeast is because I wanted to make a cheese ice cream, a vegan cheese ice cream. Yes, I know. Mm -mm. I don't think mm -mm. straight. I don't think straight. I promise oh, you. No. <laughs> it came out. So I was like, how do I get that cheesy flavor yep. when I'm looking for in the ice cream? Yep. So I started playing around with nutritional yeast. Um, and I, what I did was I uh, made a paste out of it. I used like a water. I used like a bunch of it. And I made a paste out of it and I folded it in to my ice cream base. And it came out really, really good. Like, like it's- You should have made that. <laughs> um, I do do vegan ice creams too. Like it's one of my things that I like to play. That's what food is about. Yep, yep. Food is about just teaching and having people like eat things. Experimenting. Like and, yeah. food, you should never, like I tell people when I tell all my students, it's like, oh, I got this secret recipe. I said, then do you love food? He goes, I love food. Then it's not secret. Share. Share it. Yeah. Share it to the world. I Any recipe I have, anybody wants, you can have it. Right. I'm gonna share it to the world because 
Food is love. Food is giving. You want people yep. to be happy. You just, it's not just for me. Right. It's for you all of everybody. Everybody. And trust me, any recipe that's made, somebody made it before. Mm -hmm. And they just put a twist to it. Right. You know? So right. we're going to dump this right on in here. Okay. Uh, and Chef, while you're doing that, I'm going to ask um, Ro. First time we've had a Celtics dancer on here. I'm excited. So do that little number you were practicing right before we started. I'm kidding. Okay, so I just want people to know, talk to us about um, what it's like being a professional dancer and dancing for the Celtics. Yeah, so it's extremely fun. This is actually, well, it was actually my rookie season. So this was my first season on the team. Yay! <laughs> Um, I really enjoyed it. I am actually from Memphis, Tennessee. Hey. So I was actually recruited. Ah, I love it! <laughs> <laughs> um, I've never made anyone else from Memphis, so I'm so excited. <laughs> um, but I was actually recruited here. Um, so I'm really excited to be here. Never even thought about coming to Boston. So just being able to just pack up my entire life and just move so Boston was such an amazing and humbling experience, I must add, because Memphis is not expensive. <laughs> but, uh, oh my God. But um, it's been a joy working with so many different people, meeting so many different people, um, and just being able to experience being in a professional setting, doing what I love. So I just, I love it so much, and I adore it, and I can't wait to do it again. <laughs> I love it. So are you, what, what's the practice oh. schedule like? Go ahead, Chef. Oh, we're going to go to the next step. Can okay. we talk and work? Yeah. I tell my students that all the time. I don't right. think so. Let's go to the next step, and I'll, we'll come back to that. All right, so what we're going to do is now, when making any type of, like, batter or things like that is a step. It's a yep. process. So I tell people all the time, wet, dry. You always put your wet first. So this is our wet batter Why? right here. Because when you put your wet and your dry, you, the, when you mix it and you put it in, it's going to be lumpy and you want to smooth it out. Right. And wet with dry, it's easy, easy and simple. Unless you're doing like a cookie batter or a cake batter, you gotta do a cream and method, but that's not here and there. We're yep. just working about these two. So now we put all our wet together. Now we're gonna mix all our dry. We're gonna take the dry. Ready to whisk? Got the, your hand? All right, there we go, <laughs> flick it the wrist. Let's go, whisk it in. Yes. Uh, could, could you tell us a little bit more about you're using flaxseed for an egg in this dish? Yeah. That might be a little unique Let's for some viewers. Could it. you tell us about that? Let's talk about it. Let me give her some more water just in case it doesn't go through. Keep mixing. Add a little bit of the water. Keep mixing. So I use flaxseed seed as an egg replacer. So flaxseed is one of the most versatile seeds that we can have. So I use it as an egg replacer. So what it does is it's a binding liquid. It also is a thickening agent. So you can use it to bind. You can use it to, to, to make pies. You can use it for any type of replacer that you use for, like, if you're making oatmeal or something like that. You want something to thick? Use flaxseed. It works wonders. I see your wrist. I see your wrist. Almost there. Got your arm, ooh, mm -mm -mm. she's spilling all your stuff, Chef. That's okay. No, this is good, this it's is good. Okay. It's a little, little if the mess. kitchen's not a little messy, then yeah, is the food no, really good? Not, is it really I, good? No, 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 I don't believe in that. Oh, never mind, <laughs> never mind. I, I guess that's just my I, thought. I, I, I don't believe in that. I'm gonna pour this, <laughs> little, this in there. So that's the butter and, mm -hmm. and the, the milk. The butter and the milk. The oat milk. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you, um, Liz. Oat milk, almond milk, cow's milk, goat's milk. Cats, what milk should we be drinking? What, is there a milk that's better than the other? Talk to us. I love this question. You are right. Oh my goodness, there are so many options at the store when you go these days. It can certainly be overwhelming. Um, I always recommend to just choose the milk that oh, yeah. is best for your preference and for Proud your dietary needs. Proud of you. Oftentimes people will are lactose intolerant, so they can't have cow's milk, or people may have a soy allergy, so soy milk might not be a good replacement, or even a nut one, a nut allergy, so almond milk may, may not be great. Um, cow's milk nutritionally has a great profile. It's got protein, it's got some carbohydrates, it's got calcium, um, but all milk alternates are fortified, meaning they have nutrients added back to them so that the nutritional composition should be relatively the same around all the different choices. Um, price may come into 
factor when you're choosing a milk. Um, some of the milk alternatives can be a little bit more expensive than just basic cow's milk. Um, but the one piece of advice I would definitely give is always check the nutrition facts label. Sometimes the milk alternates can have a flavoring added to them, just like you have strawberry milk or chocolate milk. Sometimes you have like a vanilla flavored milk alternate. So um, it's good just to make sure that you're choosing plain or unsweetened, just to make sure that you're able to control that sugar content if that's something you're concerned about. All the time. <laughs> it's always the sweetener one. Okay, so what we're going to do now, had this conversation off mic. Ooh. All, right. <laughs> All right, we had this conversation off mic. Let's do it. Are you proud? <laughs> so while she's scooping, we're going to start frying some stuff. Don't mess this so, up, bro. So uh, right here we have, um, these are oyster mushrooms. Um, you can use any type of mushrooms. Um, preferably, I use Hen of the Woods, and Hen of the Woods is a large mushroom. Um, they are what from people go. Oh. <laughs> I trust you. Right in the middle. Go crazy. Ooh. Look at you. Ooh. What did you great? Go pour, ahead. Pour, pour. Hey. Pour. There you go. Come on. That was perfect. That's great. Look at you. You're a professional. I'm gonna hire you. <laughs> um, so I preferably use Hen of the Woods, but you can use any type of mushrooms you want. Hen of the Woods are a little bit expensive, but these oyster mushrooms are relatively, relatively cheap. You can get my Takis. You can use King Oysters. Um, I would not use Portobellas. I would not use uh, like Chantwells. Those are really expensive. I would not. I would use the mushrooms that are a little bit more hardier, have a little bit more meat to them. So we're gonna start and we're gonna dip and fry. So what I have over here is a wax. So think about making um, Kentucky Fried Chicken. You've seen Kentucky Fried Chicken before, yep. where they usually have some type of, they sit there in buttermilk, yep. and then they take it and they fry it online. We're doing a play on that. Okay. Same type of thing. So over here we have a nice little spice rub. You want guys to smell it? it smells great. Ooh. It smells great, right? A little nutmeg, yeah. a little. Yeah, it smells yeah, great. Okay. So we're gonna dip in our mix. So the good thing about the about our mix is got to go through it. We might have to. Jeff, we closing this up? Close it right on up. All right. That was good. He's a good. Proud of you. I know he's a little nervous about that. <laughs> so we went wet, then we're wet, going to dry. Then we're, going, we're going right to dry. OK. Jeff, while you're doing that, talk to us a little bit about kneecap. Kneecap, my baby. Yep. <laughs> yep. So what Kneecap is is a culinary training program. We are a 14-week culinary training program. We are a job placement program. Um, I have been with Kneecap for almost two years now. What's your role there? I am the lead culinary director over there. I do anything that has to do with food. Got you. Um, anything that has to do with food and students and the love of it. We're going to go right in. That's nice. Ooh. How quick, quickly that just... Ooh, that's going to be crispy, I can tell. So the pot's kind of small, so I'm not going to put a lot in at once. Um, so I've been with Kneecat for almost two and a half years now. Drop the heat. Is it weird that, like, grease don't scare me? Now, that's how I know fry. you're a chef. Yeah, where you see, we kind we spread out a little bit, but it's frying up good. Liz, I have uh, I have a job for you. You're gonna need this, and you're gonna need that. So, oh yeah, exactly. So wow, look, look that was that. quick. So oh, how? Look at that. That was like what? Two minutes? A little max? bit under. We're gonna yeah. let it go for like a couple more seconds to make sure it's cooked cook through. Okay. And then, oh yeah, it came out great. Okay. So my problem is, guys, is that I'm a neat freak. I cannot work where things look messy. It just won't work for me. And I are two different people. It, it's just, it just won't work for me. <laughs> it doesn't sit right in my soul. Um, it does not sit right with my, my elders. They tell me to make sure things are clean. That, look at that. That looks good. Go crazy. Salt and pepper it. So about, I would say about two and a half minutes, Chef, about right? About two and a half minutes. And then the temp was about 375, My, my temp right now was 350. Okay. Um, but no higher than 375. Okay. What was you saying about kneecap, Jeff? Oh, so kneecap, job chasing program. I've been there for about two and a half years. I, um, 
what I love about Nika is that I finally work at a place that their mission statement matched my soul. It matched my goals. We are a job training program that empowers people who are in poverty, who has housing issues, who has job issues, who have been coming out of jail, cannot find work. We are a job training program to understand that food can change your life. Um, food is forgiving, food is, culinary is forgiving, culinary is loving, culinary is understanding. So culinary industry is one of the industries that's the most forgiving that you can just go, give it a couple more minutes, huh? you can go to a job no matter what your background is and you can, you can get hired. Mm -hmm. But understanding that you're here to change your life. Yep. Uh, one of my quotes that I tell my students every graduation is that your life is a recipe. At the end of when your life is going wrong, your recipe is going wrong, you don't throw the recipe away. Right. You have to rewrite the recipe until it works. Mm -hmm. Don't throw your life away. Yep. No matter what ha hard things happen, you have to rewrite it and make it work out for you. Yep. And I explained that to them that life is going to have hard problems. But what, what we do at NECA is that we find ways to help you. Mm -hmm. We find ways to guide you. We find ways to give you what you need. We find ways to find people that can help. Maybe we don't have the answer. Right. But maybe we can connect to somebody else who does have that. Love that. And I am really love that the fact that I work at a place that really understands the population we work with. I don't think that we use the population for like any funding. I don't think we do none of that. We use the people. We really help our people in any way. Trust me, I've been over backwards for my students. Yep. Okay, a bunch of them are probably watching right now. What up, gang? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just want to, you know, let them know how much I care for them. Like I, they know me. I'll go the extra mile. And I think that's the best part about what we do is that we go the extra mile. Two more seconds. We go the extra mile for our students and the people of our population. When you become a NECAT grad, you don't just disappear. Yep. I'm all my students that graduate. I know where all they at. I know where all my, especially students graduate from the jail. They, they, I can reach them. I can call them. I, we're, we're on a real relationship where like I become a family. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what people that's need. What, and that's what NECAT's about. We're built off of family. Yep. We're built off, we're small, but we're mighty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we care about each other. I'm going to keep frying while we talk. Okay. Oh. And NECAT is N-E-C-A-T. So if anyone wants to find you or the they, program, they can just look it up. Yes, we are a free job training program. You can look it up. Um, you can find us um, online. Um, you can find me online. You can find all everything. You can find anything online, actually. I found that out the other day. Uh oh. <laughs> Looking for the wrong things. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a question for you, Ro. Going back, I want some more insight. I want people to hear more about what it's like. So, what's the schedule? How often are you practicing? What are the practices like? Is Marina running you crazy? Marina's our, our director of choreography and the entertainment team, um, her coach, essentially. So, talk to us more about it. Yeah, so the practice schedule is um, it's not horrible. So usually, <laughs> usually we would practice like Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. So during the week is two hours, and then on Sundays it would be for three hours. So usually, um, let's say we're just getting started, um, we would just be learning routines, um, learning how to dance with each other, learning um, everybody's um, strong points mm -hmm. and then just blending that way I feel like the best part about being on the team was um, just like figuring out everybody's strong points and how coach utilizes everybody's strong points is so amazing she's so great I genuinely love her so shout much out shout out to Marina because she is a gift from the Lord I love her um, so it's just been a great experience like the practices of course like if we're doing practice game practice game practice game practice game by Sunday we're like <laughs> Like, oh Lord. <laughs> but it's such an amazing experience, and you don't really understand how much you love it until like it's taken away. Mm. So it's like when we finally started to calm down, and then when playoffs were over, That's everybody cool. was sad because right. it's like, wow, we're not gonna be at practice, or we, we got so used to seeing each other every single day, right. and then now we don't get to see each other. So it was fun. I loved it. <laughs> Good, I love that. You are, Whenever I watch you perform the group, you look like you're having a blast, which I love. Um, so that's awesome. And yeah, shout out to Marina. Um, Liz, I have a question for you. We're using mushrooms. I feel like it's like a love or hate type of thing with mushrooms. Um, people, some people are like, no, absolutely not. But are mushrooms worth trying to figure out how to incorporate it into your diet? Like what type of benefits do they add? Are they worth it or should we just... 
That is a great question. Um, they are worth it. Most mushrooms are um, a great uh, part of the diet. They are. They have fiber. They have potassium. Um, some of them actually have some other nutrients like zinc. Um, some can have vitamin D. So you actually do get a fair amount of good um, vitamins and minerals from them. Um, they're a little bit lower in protein, so it may not necessarily be a good re protein replacement, though they are often used um, in a protein-like application because they're nice and chewy. They have a new mommy flavor when you cook with them, which is sort of that um, you know, salty flavor to them. And they're very versatile. I mean, Chef listed off how many different types of mushrooms there are, so that can make it a lot of fun to cook in a lot of different ways, a lot yeah, of different, different types of dishes. Textures. Exactly. Mushrooms are like one of the best things I love to eat. Because you can do so much with them. Um, you could actually use mushroom as a binder as well. So you could blend it up and use it as a blinder, like for like duck cells and things like that. So mushrooms are one of the gifts to earth to me. I love mushrooms. Like I, I will go, I used to go foraging and things like that. So like understanding like, and then you also have some mushrooms that are super expensive that like, you know, truffles and chanterelles. But then you have mushrooms that are just, just as good and you can get them right in your grocery store from portabellas to hen of the woods to baby portabellas to creminis to all types of mushrooms. Yeah. I, I, mushrooms are delicious. I love me a mushroom. Great. And you can um, use them just as Jeff is today to kind of look like a chicken um, in this riff on chicken and waffles. But we could also dice them up and make them kind of like a coarse meat texture like in a burger or something like that. So um, mushroom burgers. they're very versatile and a fun one, fun one to use. So I'm excited to try these today. Ro, are you a big mushroom fan? In Memphis, is it a thing? What What do you typically? What are your favorite? <laughs> what are your favorite meals? What are you rolling with? So, this may sound a little cliche, but soul food is my heart. <laughs> um, the 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 funny thing is, uh, Memphis is not the healthiest um city. You wouldn't say. What? <laughs> you wouldn't say. Um, my no. favorite thing to eat was always catfish. <laughs> Catfish, um, fried chicken, greens, um, candy yams, <laughs> those type of things. Um, but since I've moved to Boston, I have slowly but surely <laughs> adapted to a healthier lifestyle. And since I moved here, I've actually oh, tried goodness. mushrooms um, here and loved them. But back home, that would be something I probably would have never tried. So I'm actually excited to try it as a, a protein replacement. I never knew that you can use it for chicken. So I'm very excited about that. <laughs> I love it. I think it looks, it does. It's like a play on the chicken and waffles. It looks like chicken, but I think, because I'm plant-based, I'm vegan. So what I tell people is don't go in thinking it's going to taste like chicken. No. Does it taste good or does it not taste good? And then, then we leave it there. And I think that's where some people go wrong. Like, oh, this don't taste like chicken, but does it taste good? No, so I feel like it's a mindset. Reality. Right, right. Go into thinking anything tastes like chicken. Unless it's chicken. Unless it's chicken. Oh, he's going to curse his ass. Unless it's chicken. Because what bothers me is everyone says everything tastes like chicken. Oh, I had possum and it tastes it's like just chicken. Like Oh, them frog I, legs I, tasted like chicken. I, like, like no, stopped a lot. Everything's. I could get with some people who say it has the same type of like stringiness mm. or texture, but it don't taste like chicken. Right. It don't taste like chicken. You could say along the lines of like, I uh, have it along the texture of chicken, mm. but as I say, it tastes like chicken. No, mushroom tastes like mushroom. Right. Mm. Chicken tastes like chicken. Right. Crocodile tastes like crocodile. <laughs> that's what so, I've heard. That's what I heard, right? I, he I heard crocodile is really good. Um, actually, I had crocodile, so it's really, really good. It was so, poor crocodile. All um, oh, right, sorry. Vegan <laughs> talking. I mean, if you want to substitute vegan for crocodile, you know what? Some seitan you can do. Mm, okay, okay. It's like you could just ground or take some tempeh and ground yep, it up. Yep. And make like a crocodile fl flare of a burger. You'll have to do that <laughs> for me. You'll you know, I. Me. You know, one of the things when I, I was vegan for almost two years at the restaurant I was at, and um, the thing is that when I was vegan, I did not want. I, I had urges for things like bacon, yep. right? But when I always thought about it, it's like, if I'm vegan, I'm vegan for a reason. Mm -hmm. So I don't want bacon. Maybe I like that salty flavor. So how do I incorporate that? Yep. So I wouldn't make bacon. I would figure out how to get that salty flavor from bacon and make it myself. Yep. So it was like, you know, like those type of things that you would want, like, like such as like if I want a cheeseburger, 
I want that aspect of like the cheesiness, the goodness, like the like like how do I bring that into a vegan lifestyle? Yep. So we used to do things like um, a seitan burger. Uh, this was before Beyond Burger was the thing. Mm -hmm. Like we'll do like a seitan burger and chop it up and 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 bind it with something and then have that nice like you know vegan cheese don't melt. So we would do like we use. Um, a yeast and make like a gooey. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And make things like that. Yep. So how do we do things like that that's still good and resembles what you're looking for? Right. Because like I personally think as a vegan, I don't. I'm not looking for the item. I'm looking for the flavor. Right. So right. How do I get that flavor? Yep. Like you know, a lot of people say I'm vegan. I just want bacon. No, you just want <laughs> the flavor of bacon. You want that taste, that salty love that you're yep. looking for. Yep. And that's all bacon is. It's like a high salt contact and has that nice, like, subtle taste. Uh, I can never get rid of bacon. That's why Jeff, I what's, I'm, what's going on here? Oh, yes. Okay. So what we have going on right now is we have um, maple, a maple rosemary honey syrup. So what I did was that I took a, a lot of rosemary okay. and I steeped it in some real, real maple syrup. Not that stuff that you get at your house. Not that Aunt, Aunt Jemima. Jemima. <laughs> not all of those. That, all Aunt Jemima is is corn syrup. It's corn. Mm -hmm. it, that, that's not real syrup. Real maple syrup. I have a, um, a colleague. His name is Chef Mark. Chef Mark has maple trees in his backyard. Okay, oh, Chef yeah. Mark. Oh, yeah. Big up to Chef Mark. He's probably watching, too. Um, <laughs> Chef Mark has maple trees in his backyard, so you have to tap the maple yep. trees. And it's a, it's a long journey. You know, tapping it, then cooking it, then boiling down. Mm. So, like, to get probably one of these, it's probably like five gallons. Wow. Five gallons. After of, all that after water all that evaporates. Water evaporates it's probably like syrup. five gallons of wow. that. Wow. So, to make that, it's a process. And it's yep. a love process. Yep. Because and then you that, appreciate it more, like we talked about earlier. You appreciate it. I still have his maple syrup on my desk. I should have brought it in. Um, it, it's, it, you appreciate it more because you make it with love. Yep. So in here is maple syrup that I reduced down and I steeped a lot of rosemary in it. Okay. So it's going to have that nice, like, woody, like, aroma to it mm. and a little bit of raw honey in there. And it's going to just a whole different Ooh. experience of, like, syrup that you get because most people. I usually just dump the little, you yeah, know, yeah, the Aunt Jemima, exactly. right? Exactly. Okay. Most people have really have never had real maple syrup. Mm. But you're going to taste the difference of, like, What's going on? You're going to be like, wow, you're going to, you don't taste that like corn syrup flavor. Yep. Like, like I cannot eat regular syrup anymore. I can't take it. Mm. Like if I go to, if I go to like a place like uh, IHOP or something, my kid would get mad. Dad, why do you bring your own syrup? <laughs> <laughs> Like, That's like my it, mom used to yeah, carry around but, hot sauce and right, a pocketbook. Right. You had the syrup. Like I can't go to those places <laughs> no more because like I cannot eat those. I, that, I can't stand that flavor. So if I'm going to those places, I'm getting eggs now. I can't yep. eat the pancakes no more. Yep. You know, I can't eat those things because that flavor just don't sit right with me. All right. So this is my favorite part. This is with um, okay. one of my chef's um, friend, Stacia. She says that, oh, Chef Chris is coming. I am <laughs> Chef, <laughs> Chef Sasha was on last week. If you if you joined, that's I what he's referring to. It was to. a great show, so I hope you guys watch it. If you didn't, go back and watch it. Yep. Uh, so we're gonna play. We're gonna have some fun. Um, this is where I what I do with the gloves. This is where like I just like to have fun because food is fun. Yep. I'm just gonna unplug that real quick. Okay. Food food is fun, and what's the point of cooking if you can't have fun? Right. So let's plate some stuff. So I brought some extra things um, over here. I made some quick pickle onions. Pickled so, onions. Yes. Yeah. So in my quick pickle is uh, two types of vinegar. Oh, you come on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's you can put that right there. It's two types of vinegar. I use uh, sherry vinegar and I use uh, champagne vinegar. Huh? Um, there's some sugar. There's some salt. And it's um I use instead of like a regular pickling seasoning, I use cardamom, I use um anise, anise star, and I use fennel seed. Oh, and it gives okay. it like a different type of like like I like that um weirdly enough I hate licorice, but I like the licorice flavor in my food. Is that weird? Interesting. <laughs> is that weird? Do not. <laughs> That's a yes for list. That is interesting. It's weird, right? I, I'm a weird person. That's okay. <laughs> I'm okay with this. So we're gonna have some fun. All right. Yeah. So we got the waffles down on the plate. So like if you, I, I you don't eat know. Eat with your you guys, eyes too. I heard so that. So what we're gonna so. do is right real quick before I want you guys to just feel like the, the crispiness of it, like how crispy it, 
how how crispy Ooh. it is. It Can I eat? I'm go go. Yeah, I want to eat it. Go how it resembles like a like a chicken, but it's not. But it's crispy. It tastes like chicken. It's, no, don't don't <laughs> do that. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab some nice what? pieces. Hey, I'm listening. Have you ever tried? Have you ever tried doing this but baking the mushrooms? Like, yes. how does that hold up? It's do you get the crispy texture? Because some people may want to think about doing that. So, like, uh, I, again, like, I use this one as an example, but you can still get the same crispy texture that you're looking for. Um, it's going to bake it a little longer and on a higher temperature. So you want to put your oven at probably, like, a good 400, oh, wow. and then they'll get it that nice crispy temperature, like your house oven. So like if you're in a, a regular kitchen oven that has, if you have a really nice oven, like I don't, you have to, <laughs> you have to put your oven a little bit higher because you, uh, you want to get that nice hot air thrown into it. But you have a nice convection oven, put 350, yep. so you got to go right through. Okay. It'd be great. Delicious. Great. This one's mine. <laughs> So Liz, um, we um, we fried in some some fat, and I think overall um, people think that all fats are bad. Could you talk to us about that and explain if fats are bad overall or if there's some good fats? That's a great question. Um, so we actually we need fat. Fat is essential for us. Um, it's really important in a lot of function from brain to eye. Um, we need it to absorb a lot of our vitamins. A D BK, um, but there are, um, you can make some health, more healthful choices when selecting your fats. So there's saturated fat, which is typically solid at room temperature. It's typically these animal based, so things like butter, lard. Um, we want to try to eat less of that and try to focus more on unsaturated fats. Um, and those are things like, um, you know, the canola oil that we use today, olive oil, avocado, nuts and seeds, um, those actually have a lot of health benefits for us. Even some salmon have omega-3, I don't know if you hear about omega-3 fatty acids often. Um, it's really good for your heart health, can help lower cholesterol. So those, when you are choosing fats, are definitely ones that you want to consider and try to incorporate more in your diet. Um, I want to be careful when I say more. I think it's still fat. Uh, we still want to be cautious about how much we're choosing. But when you are, um, so it's good to um, use follow portion sizes for selecting your fats. But you can make more healthful choices. And it is not bad to include. Just want to be sure you're looking for those unsaturated fats. Hearing that. We're almost Jeff, done. you are going crazy. He's getting real surgical and microscopic here. Yeah, with the garnish. So what did you put on top? You mix oh, the pickled I onion with the pickled onions with some pick with some um microgreens. So the reason why I put it up there is because I think personally every dish, even even veg even um uh, dairy dishes or any type of like any type of like um dessert dishes needs acidity. Mm. Um I think this dish needs a little bit of saltiness and acidity to go with it. And so I put some type of pickled onions up there. And what the pickled onions is gonna do is gonna give it a different like feel to your mouth when you're tasting it. And it's gonna just come like perfectly. You just need a little bit of salt that's gonna add to it. And it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. This looks so, incredible. And then what were you putting? Oh, some just some edible flowers just to garnish it up that make it look nice, make it look like summer. Wow, look at this. And now, voila, we have. Zoom in on, this is this is incredible. Where's my phone? I gotta take a picture before we eat. Wow. Um, so whenever whenever we're ready to taste, we'll grab some. Big one now. Okay. Oh. These are sweet cheese. And then, we're almost finishing up, Chef. So just talk to us about your journey, how you got into cooking. Um, so we'll start with my mom. Um, funny enough, my mom used to make um, uh, liver, right? Um, you know, like the liver and onions. Yep. Hated it growing up. <laughs> Hated it growing up. But my mom, my mom's so old school is that I didn't want to eat it, right? So the next day, I'll get up in the morning for breakfast, and my mom or my dad, well, they would like cook like bacon, 
pancake. You wake up in the morning like, oh my gosh, up. <laughs> Bacon, pancakes, you go running. <laughs> Get down to the kitchen table, bam. My mom, I'm like, yeah, I'm hungry. She'll pull that liver, bam. Oh, ain't no way. A a be for real, mom. <laughs> like, if you're gonna be anything in life, be for real. <laughs> like, come on, mom. Like, you serious? Aspire to be for real. Like, I like, like that. <laughs> so she would. That was those little things of like how much like I think back about food. I, it starts with her. Mm. Um, it starts with that, um, and how food is a changed my journey is because like I was a tough kid. I uh, did some crazy stuff, and I think culinary kept me from doing the wild wilder thing. Yep. It kept me from out the streets, and this is why I'm so dedicated to my program, um, because I understand that culinary is really life-changing, and it can help everyone. Right. So I'm so dedicated to my program, because if it could help me, and I was crazy, I was doing some wild stuff, if it can help me and forgive uh, no one questioning me or ask about where I've been or things like that, and they just see that I'm food driven and food is love and I want to change people's careers with food and until food can change your life, why can't I give it back to everybody else? Right. You know, and that's my goal. Like my goal is to give food back to everyone. The forks and knives have arrived. Hey, hey, hey. I'm excited. Hmm. That. That's the garnish. Micro greens. Uh, these are for you guys over there. Okay. <laughs> Got some people in the audience who are excited. Yeah. yeah, I didn't forget about you guys. I made sure I made it now. Liz, we talked about, um, while Chef is, is finishing up, we talked about, um, you know, the Memphis and the soul food and right and like what we like to eat, which is great. But some of the the issues in the black community when it comes to food is um, it's not very healthy, right? And then we start to um, suffer from things like diabetes and hypertension and all of those chronic diseases. So just give us some quick tips on our as we kind of exit this episode. Give us some quick tips on how to manage um, chronic disease like diabetes, like hypertension through food. Great. You know, I think wow, this is just beautiful. <laughs> Let me just say, not to avoid the question, but wow. <laughs> This is beautiful. I'll be brief. Yeah, you know, um, I, I think that that's a great question. I think um, a lot of it stems from the types of foods that we are choosing, what we have access to. Um, we've talked a lot over the past four weeks now about plant-based foods and how important that is. So choosing fruits and vegetables, choosing whole grains, lean protein. Um, so those are all types of foods that can be part of a really healthful diet. I think being curious and finding ways to, um, you know, keep those culturally relevant foods, foods that are important to you, food you want to eat, and seek out some ways through people like Chris, Chef Chris to um, make them a little bit more healthful so you can still continue to enjoy them as a family tradition. They're still important and highlighted, but they can also um, keep you s healthy so that you can continue to make those um, memories and uh, traditions with your family. So really focusing on those plant-based foods, lean protein, um, physical activity, and um, I think those can be some great places to get started. Love that. And are we ready, Chef? Yeah, Please. Um, okay, okay. Let's tell, I, wanna, I just want to catch their faces on camera, so if they gag, <laughs> I'm running out the they, door. I'm actually going to take they a blah, picture of this I'm before running we... out the door. All right. Go ahead. Who's going think... first? Yeah. yeah. I will, too. It. We'll do it at the same time. Ow. <laughs> of love. Get the whole thing, the pickles, the vegetables, the, the, get it all. The, it's cardamom, it's cardamom, it's fennel seeds, it's um, an, an, an anise star. It just gives. Come on here and chill out. <laughs> <laughs> this is delicious. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you know, I try. Uh, I just wanted to tell the, the culture that we can really cook great food, and it could be healthy. 
it's gonna it doesn't have to be everything that we think about like something stuffed or something smothered yeah we can really make great food that we'll love and really still respect our elders respect that where we came from mm. and how to do it it's being innovative who's an innovator we don't have to just fry everything and cover it with sauce and put lock mac on it <laughs> you know you know we can we can still yeah. make that type of really good food that's healthy for us right good right <laughs> I don't know if you heard me when I was when I was and eating, uh, but this dish daughter. is. Oh. <laughs> Gotta say hi to my daughter because I'm like again. <laughs> um, this dish is incredible. Um, the flavors go well together. We, you could just tell that you know what you're doing. I don't know if you guys heard me, but I knew he was gonna come on here and show out as he always does. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. We Thank appreciate you. For you. Me. Of course. Um, this is great. This is amazing. Like again, like I'm just happy to be a part of something like this that could really move the culture forward. I want people. I want to stay here forever. Yeah. I want everybody to stay here forever. Right. So I'm just happy that, you know, I can teach people how to eat something really healthy. Love that. We appreciate you, Liz. Thank you. Ro, thank you for being our special guest. Um, thank you to everyone who's watching, who tuned in all four weeks, or if you just tuned in today, thank you for watching. Um, hopefully we'll be back at some point, but this is the last episode for now. I hope you got some good gems and some advice and tips on how to uh, manage or prevent disease through food. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, we'll see you.